Your reaction to a developing controversy here at the Democratic National Convention. When the media got a look at the Democrats' platform, they noticed a long-standing reference to Jerusalem as the capital of Israel no longer exists. It's been taken out of the platform. It came just hours after DNC Chair Debbie Wasserman Schultz was challenged on remarks she made to a group of Jewish voters. She was giving them sort of talking points on um, attacks against uh, Jewish Democrats and, and the issue of Israel. So she's giving them the, the talking points and she, was, uh, she, she said something that became controversial and now she's been questioned about that. So there's two separate issues, the platform and what Debbie Wasserman Schultz has said about it. And joining me here to react is Alan Dershowitz. He's a Harvard Law professor and author of Rights from Wrongs, The Origins of Human Rights in the Experience of Injustice. Professor Dershowitz, it's a pleasure to see you again. I know that you're upset Thank over you. this. Let's just start, before we get to Debbie Wasserman Schultz's comments, let's just talk about the platform. What specifically is it about the platform that you are upset with? Well, for the first time, in my memory at least, the platforms of the two parties seem to uh, differ on Israel. And Israel has always been a bipartisan issue. From 1948 until the present moment, there has never been any difference really between the Democratic and the Republican positions on Israel. And now the new Democratic platform has eliminated references to Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, has eliminated references to the refugees being settled uh, in Palestine if Palestine were to become a state, has eliminated references to Hamas uh, being a terrorist organization that should not be dealt with, and eliminated references to the fact that the 67 or 49 armistice borders should not be the ultimate uh, borders. That creates a political distance between the Democrats and the Republicans, and that's uh, too bad. I mean, it's too bad for American supporters of Israel. And this is not only a Jewish issue. The vast majority of Americans Christian, Jewish, and otherwise support Israel and want America to support the only democracy in the Middle East, a democracy that helps the United States in its battle against terrorism, a democracy that has used its resources to help uh, enhance the American uh, military, American uh, intelligence, and the Democratic Party platform should change to reflect that uh, consensus and that bipartisan nature. And if it doesn't, at least the President of the United States, in his speech, should make references to the omitted portions of the democratic platform and return this to the status of it being a bipartisan issue. But does it really matter? Because we saw this from the Republicans last week when their platform came under attack and, and you know, folks came out and said, look, you know, it's the party platform. It may or may not reflect what the actual, uh, in that case, presidential nominee uh, believed, mm -hmm. you know, on issues like abortion. And now this week the Democrats are saying, look, you know, President Obama has stood behind Israel. He's been a forceful advocate for Israel. And, and whether this language comes out of the platform is really kind of irrelevant. It's not irrelevant because of the change from the 08 to the 12 platform. It's not what the uh, platform says, it's what the platform fails to say and what it said in the past. Also, I would like to see the president use his speech as an occasion for telling Iran in no uncertain terms that there are red lines and that it will never be allowed to develop nuclear weapons, so why incur the sanctions? It doesn't pay to incur the sanctions and the diplomatic isolation because the administration has promised that you, Iran, will never be permitted to develop nuclear weapons, no matter whether it takes military intervention. Obviously, as a last recourse, we always want military intervention to be the last recourse, but the Iranians have to hear from the president that they will not be allowed to develop nuclear weapons. If he says that, and if the and if he goes back to what the 208 platform said, then the issue of Israel will become a bipartisan issue and people can vote on what they think about health care, what they think about women's rights, what they think about the economy. But Israel should never become a wedge issue that separates Republicans from Democrats. And I fear that this omission from the platform contributes to making it a wedge issue. What do you think is really going on here? Why, why would they take this language out uh, about Israel and even risk this, uh, given the importance of the Jewish vote in this election? Well, it's not only the Jewish vote, it's the pro-Israel vote, which goes well beyond the Jewish vote. It's foolishness. And I think it results from the fact that there is a lot of infighting within the Obama administration. Uh, President Obama uh, has, for himself, been on the right side of all these issues. But right now, there's a big battle within the administration as to whether the president should draw very firm lines, red lines, with Iran. There are some who are saying no. There are some who are saying yes. There are some within the Obama administration who are saying that American support for Israel should be weakened and loosened. The president doesn't support that. But I suspect that some people who had a hand 
in drafting the, uh, the platform may be on the side within the administration who are trying to soften America's support for Israel. And that's why the president has to be as clear as can be when he speaks that American support for Israel is bipartisan, it's unwavering. The United States will never allow Iran to develop nuclear weapons. It will support Israel's war against terrorism, and it will seek a peace that guarantees Israel's security in a neighborhood in which Israel's security is always at risk. It's always dangerous when you make something like this a, a political issue because both sides will, will kick it around as though it is. It, I want to ask you about Debbie Wasserman Schultz because she came under fire yesterday. She made a comment to a group of Jewish voters here uh, about, look, here's what you need to tell people when they say, oh, I'm going to go with the Republicans because they're better for Israel. And she was giving them sort of talking points on it. And at that group, it, with, to that group, she said something to the effect that the Israeli ambassador to the U.N. believes the Republicans here in America are, are dangerous are being dangerous on the issue of Israel. She later denied that she said that. I want to play the remarks she said to the group. Listen here. Mm -hmm. We know, and I've heard no less than Ambassador Michael Oren say this, that what the Republicans are doing is dangerous for Israel. They're undermining Israel's security by suggesting that the United States and Israel don't have anything other than a unique and close and special relationship. It undermines Israel's security to its neighbors in, in the Arab world and to its enemies. Now, she later well, went on Shepard Smith's show last night and, said, and denied that she said that, but clearly, you know, the tape speaks mm -hmm. for itself. I've I got 15 seconds to the heartbreak. I'm going to carry you over, but your quick thought on it. Okay, uh, clearly Michael Oren didn't say that. I've spoken to Michael Oren. I've known him for years. He would never, ever turn this into a partisan issue. Never say anything negative about Republicans or Democrats. Nor I'll hold you on that point. Israel. We'll resume right after.